for a 12-year-old bedroom wall. This then is the £117,000 Gallardo, Lamborghini's idea of being sensible. The wild wings and flared wheel arches of yesteryear are gone. So too have the protruding buttresses. And the complex V12 has been replaced by a 5-litre V10, which is almost economical. And look at this door. Look at that. See, unlike the doors on previous Lamborghinis, it doesn't open outwards and upwards in a scissor dodecahedron fashion like a gull's wing. It's just a door. Inside, things get even more normal. I've got headroom, I've got legroom, I've got air conditioning that actually works. You have to search very hard to find any evidence of Lambonus, but don't worry, because I found some. The ashtray lid is broken, and although this car has only done 5,000 miles, look at the gear lever. It's been given a certain patina by all those bejeweled Italian fingers. <laughs> Overall, though, the Gallardo does seem to have cleaned up Lambeau's act. They should have called it the Priory. It's easier to drive as well. When you thumped around the track in an old Diablo, it was like bull running in Pamplona, whereas this is more like walking through a field of cows. It's not even slightly scary. Steering's light. When you press the clutch pedal, it's like stepping in some blancmange. And what's more, for the first time ever in a Lamborghini, I can see where I've been. And no prizes for guessing who's garnished it with such a thick veneer of common sense. It was, of course, the Germans. Yep. Shock, horror, skid, slide, smoke. Lamborghinis are now made by Audi. Now, I've searched the history books for examples of these two great nations working together in the past, and there really aren't that many. Putting them together is a bit like blending sausages with ice cream, I suppose. In fact, the only time the two nations did work together was in the 1930s, and things didn't turn out well. So, how's it worked this time round? Well, let's see first of all how it compares to the other Ferrari wannabes. There's the Porsche 911 Turbo, the endless thorn in Ferrari's side. And the Aston Martin DB7 Zagato, basically a restyled, power-crazed last hurrah before the DB9 comes along. These cars are very fast, but the Lambo, despite the new one cow styling, looks like it's going even faster, even when it's standing still. It's no illusion either. With a 0 to 60 time of 4.3 seconds and a top speed of 192, the Gallardo blitzes the Porsche and the Aston. And with 100 brake horsepower more than you get in a Ferrari 360, it nukes that too. It seems then that the German-Italian alliance has been a success with this car. And we haven't even got to the best bit yet. The handling. This is where a Ferrari 360 gets tricky. Drive too fast round a bend in it, and it turns into a small dog, spinning round your legs and wagging its tail. This is in a different class. This is epic. It's like a big Lotus Elise. This is the first four-wheel drive car I've ever driven that has no understeer at all. It is fantastic. Turn in. Oh, that is lightning reaction. Changes direction like a fly. I wanted to hate the Gallardo. 
I wanted to say that Lambo had sold its soul to the devil and ended up with a glorified Audi TT. But it's wonderful. Except for exactly the same thing that nailed the Bentley Continental in last week's programme. The problem is, they've got rid of the Lamborghini idiocy, but some of the magic has gone as well. Some of the X factor that makes a car special. Let me put it this way. There are many children's stories. Mog, Kipper, Spot, the famous Seven, the Secret Five, Paddington the Pooh, Bob the Tank Engine, Thomas the Builder. But there's only one Harry Potter. There's only one Ferrari too. And this isn't it. Um, having thought about this, not much of a tribute to Lamborghini really, is it, this show? Why? Well, if you think about it, um, I demonstrated that the mirror was deeply flawed. Yeah. You hated the Countach, mm. and now you don't like their new car. No, 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 no. The thing about this is, is that I do truly believe it's a better car than a Ferrari 360. Right. But when you buy a Ferrari, you're getting so much more than just a car. You're getting that whole kind of golden glow of yes. 50 years of Ferrari ownership. That's exactly what I was trying to say in that Countach piece, because a Lamborghini isn't a Ferrari, it has to be ridiculous. Exactly. What does everybody think? What's the best Lamborghini of them all? Hands up, you got any thoughts? What do you reckon? Diablo. The Diablo's the yep. best of them all? Yep. That was pre-German? Yep. Right, anyone over here got any thoughts on what they think? The what? Miura. The Miura. Miura, yeah. Miura. 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 And do you know something quite interesting here, guys? They're all wrong. I thought that might be coming, Jeremy. Yeah. We're this, back in Jeremy's democracy. This <laughs> is the best Lamborghini of them all. Because what you've got here is you've got the kind of Germans building it, making sure that it actually comes out of the factory on time. But you've got Italian engine, Italian four-wheel drive, Italian styling, sprouty things coming out of the back. That, for me, is the perfect Lamborghini. It's the peak. And now, sliding down a bit. Well, Let me put it this way. A picnic, okay? If you went, you'd want the Germans to make the hamper so the handles don't fall off, <laughs> but you'd want the Italians to make the food, yes? <laughs> That's what you get with that. It's a German-Italian picnic where the Italians have done what they're good at and the Germans have done what they're good at. With this, the Germans have done the food. <laughs> <laughs> All of that aside, the fact remains, how does the Giardo do on the track? Now, the Stig has already been out in the Merced Largo, so he should have absolutely no trouble with its baby brother. OK, Stig's ready. And away he goes! Now, track does look pretty wet, but of course the Giardo has four-wheel drive, so it should be a match for the conditions. Let's see, first corner coming up. Slithering just a little bit. Oh, he has got some understeer, actually, there, but he's held it beautifully. Are inspired by what he knows as the music from the Cadbury's Fruit and Nut advert. And round Chicago, little wobble there. Yes, he's got the power down beautifully there, and he's coming into the hammerhead. Will this catch it out? Yes, it has caught it out, but he's held it well. Good job. Fresh sting. And here we go. Gallardo has the optional flappy paddle gear shift, which is claimed to be faster on a track. The manual gearbox I drove earlier. Certainly looks quick down there. Oh, and very quick through there. Now, amazingly, over the first half of the lap, the Gallardo was quicker than the Porsche GT3's time, also in the wet. Can it beat a 911 to the end? Can it? Oh, he's coming around Gambon. Absolutely beautifully online. You want to know how fast that was? Oh, yes. yes. Go on. This is the GT3. Similar conditions, 1 minute 27.2. Now, we thought that was quick. It's a fabulous car, yeah, very 1 quick. 127.2. This has just done it in 125.8. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa! That is unbelievable. 